Real Life Science. Real Life Science. Holy hell has this been a crazy week. We're going to start off with what we teased at the top of the show, which is uh, a little uh, insanity coming from our uh, politicians uh, in the state of Texas. Uh, listen in and enjoy a chuckle. From what's been testified to the Forest Service and the BLM, you want very much to uh, work on the issue of climate change. I was uh, uh, informed by the immediate past director of NASA that they have found that the moon's orbit is changing slightly, and so is the Earth's orbit around the sun. Uh, we know there's been uh, significant solar flare activity um, and so is there anything that the National Forest Service or BLM can do to uh, change the course of the moon's orbit or the Earth's orbit around the sun? Obviously, that would have profound effects on our climate. I would have to follow up with you on that one, Mr. Gomert. Yeah. Well, if you figure out a way that you in the... Uh, Forest Service can make that change. I'd like to know. So let's hit a couple of points here. First off, um, I didn't even know that my mom worked for the Department of Forestry <laughs> Service or Bureau of Land Management, whichever one that lady was was at. Uh, number two, that is a United States congressman from the great state of Texas that is so fucking stupid that he thinks that how to deal with it being too hot in Texas is, hey, let's go ahead and relocate the moon or change the orbit of the earth i don't even i i <laughs> what do you so, start with that right not only one this is a person that represents people that is a quote learned gentleman that's supposed to represent people of his state this person is so stupid that he should not even be allowed to operate heavy machinery in fact i would go so far as to say that that person should be chemically sterilized to make sure that his weak ass genes don't dilute the pool. But like, what the actual hell? And on top of that, when he says to the Bureau of Land Management, these are people that walk around in shorts with lanyards that make sure that, you know, brush fires don't happen. Hey, can you move well, the moon for me? Let me just to be go fair. ahead. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me just say, if they can move the moon, that is some Dr. Evil shit. And those people need to uh, be found and killed because I'm going to say that maybe, just maybe, the Bureau of Land Management for the state of Texas shouldn't get to decide where the moon is, even if they had the power to, which, again, unless you're Dr. Evil, I don't think you have that ability. So let's go through from the top and start with uh, Wolf Dragon. I think you had a very funny comment. You know, I distinctly remember watching this really awesome cartoon called Futurama, where they actually moved the Earth so they didn't have to keep dropping giant ice cubes into the ocean to cool the planet down. Um, oh. he, he knows that was a cartoon and it's not real, right? I think he's. I think he probably thinks that that was a documentary. Tweaked, you're up. Yeah, the best part of that video was her response there. I think if I were her, I would have been looking around for the hidden camera because, uh, wait, he can't be serious, right? This is this has got to be a prank. This this can't be real. A, a senator, a, an elected official? Come on. Her response there was, the thing you do when a person who is super powerful is too stupid to live, and you can't say that to their face. Roy. You know, if I had to pick out a single shred of logic in this, I would go with, now follow me here. The Earth is made of land, and perhaps by extension, because we know, what was it, Thea crashed into the Earth and produced the moon. The moon is made of land, and she works for the Bureau of Land Management. So if you wanted to move the Earth and the moon, you'd talk to the person who manages the land, I guess. I mean, fair. If she has a little remote control to move that shit, though, that's going to scare the <laughs> hell out of me. Um, yeah, so that's a thing that happened this week. I, 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 I have no more words. Roy, why don't you take us to the next uh, issue? Yeah, in a recent interview on uh, Planetary Radio, uh, experimental cosmologist Brian Keating at UC San Diego Center for Astrophysics and Space Sciences 
uh, discusses, among a lot of other fascinating topics, uh, it's a great it's a great listen. The fact that the soon to be completed Simon's Observatory may in fact be able, through detection of microwaves, detect and discover conclusively Planet Nine. Uh, so that's super cool. Uh, the Simon's Array is located in Chile's high Atacama Desert, uh, elevation seventeen thousand feet. We've got a link in the show notes. It's great, uh, great listen. Absolutely. Check it out. Absolutely. There's an hour-long interview from Planetary Radio that uh, should be heard by everyone. Phenomenal. Not only was that a great, uh, you know, the, the talk about Planet Nine, but that was just a small piece. He also talked about his book, Losing the Nobel Prize. He talked about sort of changing the way that a lot of science is done now. And, and he talked about the interesting things that basically uh, the thing that sort of cost him the Nobel Prize was space dust made for... Uh, uh, some of his uh, observations to not be doable for what he was trying to the, the, for the, the, the experiment that he was trying to work but it sent him on this whole like two or three year uh, journey of self exploration in his life where he addressed the fact that space dust cost him the Nobel Prize sort of but if it wasn't for space dust we literally wouldn't have us we, like we are star stuff this is a so it, it was a very cool very sciencey geeky but also kind of spiritual interesting uh conversation that i think needs to sort of be had right now where it's, there's times where like you, <laughs> something hits you and it doesn't hit you well it hits you hard but when you think about it in hindsight you're like hmm maybe there's good reasons for these things that are upsetting me just at the moment wolf yeah so uh we have a uh, space policy update nasa's 2022 presidential budget request biden's 2022 pbr uh it's fantastic over a six percent increase overall funding every active and planned mission it's also going to expand coverage for earth sciences and education add funding for two new discovery missions to venus that will complement each other in a detailed study of venus it's veritas and da vinci plus in the history of nasa they spent approximately three and a half billion dollars on venus as opposed to the 30 plus billion spent on mars these two missions will complement studies from the jaxa agatsuki mission and esa's venus express as well as the old soviet studies Da Vinci Plus will be a sort of vastly upgraded version of the old NASA Pioneer Venus from 1978, but with much better modern capabilities and is going to be able to in situ answer the questions brought up last year about phosphine on Venus. While Veritas will be a vastly upgraded version of the old Magellan mission and giving us much better and more detailed maps of Venus as a whole, it will also study its volcanism. So Things Wolf, that are... Oh, I was going to say. So, Wolf, can you give us a list of some of the stuff that is funded or saved by this uh, by this uh, budget? Yeah, it's it, it's a long one. Uh, so, we've got the Roman Space Telescope is saved. Europa Clipper, funded. Mars Sample Recovery, funded. Neo Surveyor, that is an Earth Defense Satellite. It is funded. Lunar Exploration Program, Funded. Extraplanetary surface nuclear power plant studies. Funded. Viper Moon Rover. Funded. SLS Block 1B variant. Funded. CubeSats and Deep Space Small Sats. Funded. Every Mars and Jupiter mission is now funded. And in the show notes, we're of course going to have a link to the PBR itself, as well as the Da Vinci Plus movie trailer. Um, th these guys took some notes from Hollywood. It is an amazing watch. Like it, you want to get excited about looking at oh we're gonna send a thing to venus to see what happens yeah watch the trailer it's yeah, fantastic absolutely i just want to call out one thing in specific that whole list of things that are funded by this are amazing uh i know some people will say like oh we've got things that we need to spend money on the the, the whatever the, the the economy and this that, and the other i will point out that there have been multiple studies that show for every penny spent on nasa it returns tenfold back to the economy on advances in technology and i'm not talking about touchy feely we're trying to answer the, the questions of the universe because they are. But in addition to that, they are advancing technology in a way that actually returns hard dollars to the U.S. economy. And one mission in particular that I want to call out here, the NEO Surveyor. That is a satellite that is being put up specifically to track near-Earth objects so that if there's something, if you remember back a couple, about a month ago on 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 real life science we had a segment where roy talked about this 
war games that they did where they did a big what if of, mm-hmm. hey, if an asteroid is coming to hit us and we find out about it four months in advance, what can we do? And the actual sort of answer is, oh, well, you could put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. But if we find it two years, three years out, there are real things we can do to save the human species. That is one of the long list that Wolf just read out. That is good shit. Woo! Roy, you had a thing <laughs> on uh, astronomers. Yeah, uh, yeah and uh, a new discovery. So they have they may have just dis- detected a new magnetar. Um, and you may think, well, like, Magnetars? We've heard of those before. What's the big deal? I had no idea so few of these things had been found. So a new discovery could soon be raising the total number of confirmed magnetars to, get this, 25. You know, hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy. We found only 25 of these things. They're a very rare type of neutron star, which are, you know, we know neutron stars, the collapsed cores of stars that started out with masses between 8 and 30 times the sun. Um, But as the name suggests, these ones have an insanely powerful magnetic field around a thousand times more powerful than a normal neutron stars and a quadrillion times more powerful than Earth's. Um, So there was another recent discovery that kind of brought magnetars into the spotlight. You may have heard of, you know, mysterious uh, stars spitting out a super powerful radio signal called a fast radio burst. And these had previously only been detected from sources outside the the Milky Way, and they didn't know where they were from. So now they're starting to, you know, connect these two things. It's a it's a great great read. We've got the the link in the show notes. Cool cool stuff. Right on. And Wolf, you had something on that? Yeah the whole the whole concept behind a magnetar. You know, like the you look up in the sky, you you see you know typically the main sequence stars, and then the leftover remnants of of post main sequence stars. Um, the the idea of you know what is a magnetar like that that came out of scientists sitting down and you know just playing with the math and figuring out you know what is the art of the possible and there's a laundry list of things and this was just one of them the fact that we are able to sit down with math and you know determine hey how does the universe work and then once we have an idea of this is a thing we might be able to go find go out and look for it we found possibly 25 of them now that's fantastic and there's still much more about our universe that we don't know absolutely tweak you had a couple of stories yeah the the chinese did a thing a few weeks ago or so they sent up a rocket with some supplies because they've got a new space station up there and i believe it was thursday they they actually sent up the shenzhou 12 flight which was the china's seventh piloted space mission and the first to actually carry a crew, a crew of three, to the Tianhe space station rocketed orbit. And yep, they went up on Thursday and they're going to be staying there for about three months or so. So they sent supplies up first of probably a month or so ago, I think it said. And now they're sending these three astronauts up to the station to, to kind of set things up, to build a home up there. So hell first, yeah, first people in their new station. Hell yeah. Huge salute to China. They sent up that Long March 2F rocket uh, with Mission Commander Nie Hiasang, who's had two previous space flights, Mission Specialist Liu Boming with one previous flight, and Mission Specialist Tang Hongbo, who this is his first space flight. Nine minutes and 40 seconds after separation from the launch, or sorry, after the launch, they had separation of the rocket. Six hours later, they successfully docked at Tianhe Station, which means Heavenly Harmony. Uh, Yeah, great stuff. I want to send up a salute. We often will call out people and say, hey man, these NASA astronauts are not American heroes. These are world heroes. By the same notion, I want to definitely point out that uh, Nie Hiaxiang, Liu Boming, and Tiang Hongbo are world heroes. These are people that are putting it on the line for, you know, fuck China, fuck America, fuck all countries and maps and all of these fake lines on the whatever. We're all humans, man. We're all mostly hairless monkeys that are trying to get off of this planet and get into multiple planets so that we can survive in case a big rock hits us. But like... It's beautiful to see humans of any, I don't care if you're from China or Russia or America or the UK. It's just, I want to salute all of the people that are doing amazing things in space. So big salute to you, China, for for that mission. And we pray that you three steely-eyed rocket men make it home safe after a successful completion to their mission. Tweak, your next thing. Absolutely. And uh, before I go to the next one, Kai, well done on those names. Very well done. I probably got them very wrong, but I've had a lot of whiskey, so (laughs) who here knows? 
All right. Next, we have the Strawberry Moon, which is the last full moon of the spring or the first of the summer, depending on how you look at it. It's going to be appearing for three days from Wednesday early morning to Saturday early morning. Uh, the, the moon actually isn't going to be pink. Funny story with that. It's, it's called the Strawberry Moon, but it's not going to be pink. It's just going to be big. It's called that because, well, a couple of thoughts on that. It, one was it's strawberry season back when the Indians named it the Strawberry Moon because this time of year the strawberries would grow and, and that's what they called it. Uh, others would think that it's this time of year, June, a lot of people get married, so a lot of love is in the air, so it's the strawberry moon for that. Uh, if you're like me and you're the parent of an autistic child, what it really means is make sure you got a few bottles of whiskey ready because your child's not going to sleep for a few days. Right on. So people can go. It's going to be at its strongest peak on June 24th in the afternoon, but I mean, obviously it'll be most visible that night. So June 24th, go out and check it out. It is going to be the last supermoon of the year 2021. So go and check that out, people. Show notes, all of this stuff will be in the show notes. Um, and lastly, I want to call out a very awesome Scott Manley video uh, that he put out uh, this week. He covered uh, the fact that there's a 50-year-old rocket, literally, the oldest rocket that has ever sort of been launched as far as uh, he can figure, and I think he would know, that uh, basically says that uh, oldest in the sense of from when it was made to when it was launched. They literally took a Minuteman II rocket. They took an old uh, uh, Cold War era rocket that was supposed to send nukes to Russia, and instead they took the nukes off of it and they put a very cool satellite payload and they launched it and it worked. Big salute. I love the idea of taking weapons of stupid and pointless war and turning them into scientific exploration and benefiting the good of all mankind. In addition to that, Roscosmos right now is putting on their big world seminar. They have people both physically and virtually from all over the world that are appearing. Uh, Roscosmos is the Russian version of NASA and they uh, have been having seminars and doing all kinds of PR work. And as part of that, China and Russia have announced this week that they are going to be officially cooperating on a moon mission with a base on the moon. We know NASA is doing it. We know the Chinese and the Russians are doing it. I, I, I'm not for jingoistic, nationalistic bullshit of people that are sort of like trying to one-up each other for flag-waving dick measuring purposes, but... If it will cause the politicians, the old sweaty men, to hand over money for scientific research on both sides, hell yes, let's start another race to the moon. But this one is not just show up and take a few pictures. Both sides are looking to put a base on the moon, do science on the moon, expand our way out into the galaxy. Good stuff all around. I want to give massive props to everybody on all sides. This is good shit. 